Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and this is part 5 of our automated build deploy test with Team Foundation Server 2015 and Selenium. And in this part we'll be talking about deploying application and Selenium framework from Team Foundation Server 2015 in local machine. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 4 since this part will have some similarities and continuation from those parts. And please keep in mind that this video series is a part of our ALM with Team Foundation server. So let's get started. Deployment logic in local machine. So deployment of our application and Selenium framework in our local machine can be done using two ways. One is by creating a build definition using XAML or by creating a build definition with vnext build definitions. So we are actually going to use vnext build definition in this whole video series. We will not be talking about XAML build definition ever in this video series since vnext is the future of Team Foundation Server and Team Foundation Server 2015 has this cool feature of vnext build definition. So why not just go with that? So I'm not going to use XAML build definition ever in this video series at all. So vnext build definition days. So what is the checklist for our deployment? So basically before starting to deploy our application and the test framework and to create a continuous integration, we need to somehow have a checklist for the deployment. And the checklist is this. So we're going to deploy our application to a internet information server. So that's what is the first thing which we need to do. So once we build our application source code, we need to deploy that into our IIS. And then we also need to deploy our database that we have created that is associated with our application. As you can see in the SQL Server, we have a database for our application, which is nothing but our employee DB. And this application has the tables, which is required for our application to perform operations normally. So this also has to be deployed. And then we also have to execute the test cases that we have created in our test project. So these are the most important things that we need to do while doing a deployment of our application as well as executing the test cases while creating the build definition in vnext. So these are the checklist, right? And then let's create a vnext build definition in our Team Foundation Server 2015 web edition. So before creating the vnext build definition, the most important thing which we need to do, of course, you will not realize why we have to do this, is this. We need to create a published profile within our application for deploying in internet information server so without having this published profile we will have a very hard time to actually deploy our application so if you don't know what this web application deployment is all about for ASP.NET application please go to Google just search for the web application deployment by using the published profile in ASP.NET and you will find a lot of articles about it but we're not really going to discuss about that by googling it rather we'll directly talk about in action so for that i'm going to flip to visual studio so this is the same project which we worked in our last two videos and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a published profile again what is this published profile is all about so once your application is built the basically the built application will have just the binaries of the application so if you go to the solution explorer and if you just open the folder in explorer uh, you can see the application execute auto employee will appear and there is a bin folder and this is the actual applications uh, yeah, source code which is going to be deployed along with some of these uh, configuration files into your internet information server which you can see here www.root and you can see the actual uh, bin files that you saw in the uh, application directory and these are some of the contents and the web configurations file which is required for making your application up and running like this right so if you want to uh, deploy this into your internet information server so again internet information server is something uh, which makes my application up and running and if you go here to the internet information server you can see there is a uh, there is a sites and there is a default website and this is what is my application which is hosted into this IIS and this is what makes my application up and running. So we need to automatically deploy this into the IIS, right? So how to do this? Basically, not just copy pasting the file will actually create that. There is something like bindings and uh, you also need to enable the browsing of the directories. So all these things you can do very, very simply using the published profile, which is available with Visual Studio. 
So you can create a lot of published profiles. One is for the release, one is for the debug, and one for the testing, one for the production, one for the staging. You can create a lot of published profiles basically. But I'm not gonna really deal with creating a lot of published profiles. Rather, I'm gonna just create only one profile, only one published profile, which can be used for deploying my application into the internet information server, both locally as well as in a remote machine. So we'll talk about deploying the application in a distributed machine, uh, while we talk about uh, that in the next video. But as of now, we're gonna just deploy in our local machine. So how to deploy the application in local machine? Basically, it's very, very simple. So if you just right click the execute auto employee ASP.NET MVC application, there is something called publish. So if you click this option, uh, you will have uh, this uh, new window coming in. I have already created a release publish profile and you can see what I have created. Basically, I've given a name for this profile and in the connection, uh, I have changed the publish method to web deploy package. So this is basically gonna create a package for me into this folder. So if I just copy paste this folder location in the run, you can see these are the files which is automatically created for me. And this is a zip version of our application. If you just open this and you can see the content and you can see the actual application which is built using the agent. And here we go, here's the package. This is the file that you saw in www root and this is exactly what is going to be deployed right and uh, this is the uh, package location and this is my site name remember in internet information server we have something called default website right and that's the name of the site that i have given here as well and then in the settings i'm actually giving the database connectivity to create a database for me in the database that i have the sql server database so that's the connectivity that I have given right here. And then there is a preview which just says that uh, this is what it's gonna do. And then if you do a publish, this will basically do a publishing of your uh, application into this folder. And if you want to see how this publish actually works, location right here, and you can see the date and time is 22nd, but actually today is 23rd, right? 23rd February. And now if I do a publish, you can see that the publish has started and it is basically publishing the application into that particular folder and you can see uh, it is picking up all the files required for uh, building the application and it is creating a package. There we go, it has created and now if I go to my release folder you can see it's all 23 meaning today's date. So it has just created a very very simple uh, applications uh, release zip uh, so that this is the zip file or the release folder that you can ship with any of your team members or even to the client who can actually deploy your application into internet information server and again if you ask me how to deploy the application to internet information server it is very 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 simple you can see there is a release uh, dot deploy readme text and it has a very very simple command line parameters where you can use for deploying your application into your local machine. Well, how to do this? I'm gonna show you that very quickly. So I'm gonna open the command prompt and I'm gonna run as an administrator. And here, I'm just gonna go and type release.deploy.cmd slash y. And this means I'm gonna install it into my internet information server. So you can see that the latest and the greatest change of my application is right there into my internet information server, www root and it's all deployed and you can see the only change it has did is the 23 the web.config that's it so meaning the latest file is deployed into my local machine well how to achieve this using the vnext build definition that's the question that's how we're going to do with our team foundation server 2015. so what i'm going to do i will go right here to my team foundation server and i will go to this build tab and this build tab actually has the uh, build definitions and build management all those stuff so this is the build definition i got and i have run so many tests for my application to make sure my application is stable and i'm going to show you how to create a very very simple build definition so what i'm going to do i'm just going to uh, click this add button uh, this will bring me up a, a build definition template and again these videos we have already discussed while talking about team foundation server build system in our execute automation video channel so you can just go ahead and watch the complete video of that and have 
exclusive videos of how this build definitions and build system works right so i'm going to quickly create a build definition uh, using the vnext and i'm going to select the visual studio i'm not going to select anything else and hit ok and this will basically bring a template of uh, stuffs right here so i'm really not going to do any testing as of now the ui testing in my local machine because that i'm going to do while working with the distributed testing right so i'm going to just remove some of the stuffs right here uh, even this one and this is the only thing I'm, which I'm going to keep. And here in the solution, I'm basically going to select the employee web application and the solution. So I'm going to select this solution, the execute auto uh, employee solution. And I'm going to just uh, save this build. And let's give this a name here. Build deploy test. And hit OK. All right. Great. And then if I do a queue new build, it will actually uh, build the application. But I'm not really interested in just building it yet. I'm going to deploy that and publish that into my internet information server. So for that, I also need to uh, add some of the comments. So I basically need to add some of the MS build arguments right here. So before adding all these stuffs, let's not confuse a lot here and let's take this to next video. So thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.